This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Hing.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Karmic Evolutions, Astrologically Speaking. I'm your host, Mary Horn Hassan of Karmic Evolution Astrology. I would like to introduce my guest, Nadia Smirnova Miro, a New York-based counseling Western astrologer and extrasensory practitioner with a degree in nuclear physics, practices, teaches, and lectures on astrology locally, nationally, and internationally. Originally from the USSR, she began her study and practice of astrology more than 30 years ago in Moscow and is now a passionate astrology advocate who writes and lectures on the subject of how astrology and extrasensory perception work from a physics perspective. The author of Physics of Astrology, an ebook series you can find on Amazon.com, Nadia has been interviewed numerous times on TV, radio, and YouTube. She's also herself interviewed numerous brilliant international astrologers on YouTube to promote worldwide astrological conferences. Nadia is a member of the Organization for Professional Astrology, or OPA, and a contributing agent at the Cosmic Intelligence Agency, or CIA. Welcome, Nadia, to the show. How are you today? How are you? Hi, everyone. Uh, it's so nice that you could join me. I'm so sorry I have some of this noise outside my house, and hopefully they're going away soon. It's always it's like Murphy's Law, right? If anything can go wrong, it will. So I talk very loud, and I know you can too. So we'll just <laughs> overcome. Of course, yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, I understand that you're a professional astrologer and a nuclear physicist and that you're psychic. And that's a really interesting combination. So let me ask you, do you use all of these capabilities when you read a person's chart? I mean, that may sound like a bizarre question, because, but I know you can answer that because I'm throwing in the nuclear physicist part. It's easy to understand that astrologer can be a psychic. But, you know, do you use all of these capabilities, including the physics? And if so, how does this make your readings different from other astrologers' readings? <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. Uh, first, I want to clarify, uh, I am a former nuclear physicist. I don't work in a, a nuclear physics field right now, mm -hmm. okay. but I am still scientist by the way I approach life and astrology and uh, extrasensory perception realm. So um, to answer your question, when I do my readings or when I do a research on astrology or when I do readings uh, psychically, I always do it with the scientific approach, so to speak. So one of the things that scientists do, they validate what they think might be true. So the validation is one of the things that's important. So when I make a, a judgment uh, or interpretation of a chart or an auric field of a client, uh, I do want to validate myself so I don't really... Uh, feel that uh, a doubt in what I'm saying because we all humans. Are you are you talking about observation correlation stuff like that? Um, not really. So I'm gonna explain. Mm -hmm. uh, as we all astrologers are humans, right? And the way mm -hmm. we make predictions or um, uh, do readings, essentially we interpret what we see. Right? right, and just like doctors who um, interpret symptoms in order to make a judgment what kind of condition uh, their patient has, uh, the same uh, way we make a judgment based on what we see in a chart. And just like doctors who mm -hmm. could misdiagnose a person, astrologers could misdiagnose a situation as well. So for me, uh, I like to. Um, take a look at the situation from several different angles and if all my um uh, if all my judgments from several different different angles come to the same result the same answer then i know that i validated my reading my judgment so just to give it uh that much more precision mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's a, a scientific approach 
during the reading, I like to also explain to my clients uh, a little bit of physics behind uh, the astrology and physics behind the extrasensory perception uh, to give them an idea that this is all real, this is not our imagination. And once they understand that there is a physics behind it, this is actually a, a solid um, physics-based phenomena that we're dealing with, they have more confidence about what they hear so they don't have doubts. Yeah, I know what you're saying because I know a lot of times I talk to clients about intuition, you know, just because you can't um, see it or touch it sometimes, you know, if you just feel it, it doesn't mean that it should be disregarded, you know? Yes, a lot of people have psychic abilities, but they don't really believe in them or don't acknowledge them simply because they don't understand that it is normal for a human to have those. Mm. Uh, and we are very much uneducated about our own extrasensory perceptions. And we are uneducated for a reason. Mm. Because if we knew, if humanity knew about their own psychic powers, extrasensory perception, we would have that much more transparent life. We would have uh, less opportunity uh, for people to lie and uh, less opportunities for government to lie to us. Uh, if we all were educated and psychically tuned, we would see things coming. We would understand the reasons behind certain uh, things that the government does or certain things that um, bad people do to us, right? We would see everything uh, behind. We would not be able to be deceived if we were all educated and psychically in tuned. Mm -hmm. However, these days there is a lot more education out there that people can find about their own extrasensory perception. And a lot of it is very scientific. And for example, um, neuro-linguistic programming is very much combines many different philosophies and teachings and psychology and also extrasensory perception. They don't tell you that, they don't say these words, but they do uh, include extrasensory perception uh, techniques in their teachings. And it's a neuro-linguistic programming. It's very much a valid, uh, scientifically developed uh, techniques, how to be very good judge of character, how to do a good type manipulation with people, basically in, in a good way. I mean, yeah, when, no, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Manipulation isn't bad. It's just, do we give it a pejorative connotation a lot right. of times? Be in control of your situation that you're getting yourself in and be more powerful, more confident when you uh, live your life, when you go to work, when you deal with people and social setting and so forth yeah it's interesting because the work that i do and you and i are in alignment we just come at it from different directions i think is that you know uh, what i would call a higher energy or a extrasensory to use your phrase is you know really being able to hear our own higher selves you know our inner voice our authentic voices that's what i call it a lot so um, we bypass all the other BS, so to speak, that comes at us from the outside. And we don't have to worry so much about whether someone's telling the truth or not. We just rely on what we're hearing from ourselves. You know what I mean? Because we're... Well said. Well said, Sherry. We're clear. We're clear. Well, you and I had the conversation um, when I was uh, booking you on, the, on this interview about reading people's auras. And that's a really interesting thing. So... Um, of course, I advertised this show saying you'd be talking about it. But first of all, can you define for the listeners, you know, what is the definition of an aura? Well, aura is um, electromagnetic or biological electromagnetic field that a human being is, uh, you could say, submerged into or you could say emitting that field. But it's a part of us. We uh, live in a world of separation illusion. So we think that a human being begins where the skin begins, mm -hmm. right? We think that we are is our physical body. We forget that we are a little more than that. 
And the way you um, sort of can picture it is that if you come very close to another human being and but you don't touch that human being you just stand next to that human being the first thing you might feel um the couple of things you're gonna feel you might smell that person right mm -hmm. so that means uh certain um uh, molecules are coming out from the person and gets into your nose and you can uh, smell either perfume or something whatever you could smell that person and it's a part of that person mm -hmm. right another mm -hmm. thing you could feel is a warmth right so uh, infrared uh, radiation is coming out from the person <laughs> i was gonna say that doesn't sound good but I, but i hear you it's like saying we breathe out carbon dioxide <laughs> which sounds horrible right <laughs> right so you, you could feel all of these things right mm -hmm. uh and then if you get a little more sensitive you could start feeling um uncomfortable next to another person or on the contrary very comfortable next to another person this is how we get attracted to uh, other people is we feel comfortable standing next to them or in their presence so mm -hmm. that means uh, when we are submerged in their auric field we find resonating energies we feel comfortable or uncomfortable so um that we we live in the illusion that since we don't see this it does not exist right we don't see the auric field around a human being therefore it does not exist that's an illusion right uh, from physics we know if we can measure electromagnetic field or if we can capture a wave with an antenna that means that electromagnetic uh, frequency or field exists right so uh, if if we set our devices and start trying to photograph an auric field or measure it, if we get very sensitive devices around a human being, of course we will find that electromagnetic field around a human being. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, a new age myth anymore. Scientists start photographing and measuring um, a human aura way over 20 years ago right you could find uh, businesses these days that can photograph your aura and it's going right. to be in See? color yeah, yeah. and yeah. based on those colors you're going to be able to tell if your aura if you are this type of human being or that type you're confident or not you're maybe not feeling well if you you might see the dark spots in your aura uh, on these photographs that means some diseases are brewing wow. uh, okay. so, some people can see auras in color mm -hmm. but that's rare mm -hmm. and you could also practice and learn how to see aura but that's difficult <laughs> yeah that... however there are simple simple techniques that you could use to be in touch with your aura, understand your aura without having to see it without mm -hmm. having to photograph it mm -hmm. and that's what i teach in my on online classes and in-person workshops uh, I also uh, do um, provide services of um, uh, fine-tuning the aura. And so what happens is when you live your life and you find yourself that you are upset about something, the world does not give you joy anymore and you are complaining about your life and you're fatigued and you're not feeling great about life. Usually this state is associated with the collapsed aura. The mm -hmm. aura is, is either very small around you mm -hmm. or sometimes when I diagnose people, it might be non-existent. I could tell looking at the person if the auric field is collapsed and down. Wow. One of the times you could have an acute um, argument with somebody and they bring you down and your aura gets distorted mm -hmm. and you feel icky not completely bad but not not altogether so that's a, a damage to your aura mm -hmm. and aura can heal on its own for some people mm -hmm. it depends on what you do and how you then recover well other times it become a chronic uh, chronic depleted aura 
Also, energy vampires. Uh, energy vampires is not as bad as it sounds. This is simply needy people who, uh, who whose health is bad, possibly, or mental health is bad. They latch on to healthy people who generate big auras, very given people, empath people. They latch on to them and drain their aura to feed themselves. Yeah, they, they we've don't all had people enough. like that, right? Well, let me ask you a question that just occurred to me. Um, are we all born with like healthy auras and then it just depends on what happens to us? Or do we bring uh, perhaps an unhealthy or damaged aura in from past life karma? Uh, interesting question. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a chance to measure auras of newborn babies. Mm -hmm. However, um, my understanding is that um, majority of healthy babies mm -hmm. would have a healthy aura. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as they live their life and they have a dynamic and interaction with their parents and grandparents and wherever they interact, their caretake, take, uh, caretakers, the auric field now gets uh, boosted by love and bombarded by negativity mm -hmm. and speaking of negativity negativity is in fact a negative energy it's a it's a it's a taking energy the energy that takes a chunk of your positive healthy aura away from you and you could uh, notice like for example if you're a fairly empath person you come to um uh, you come to a party, for example, and you could stand there for five minutes with somebody who's going to be conversing with you in the form of complaining about what's happening in their life currently. And after five minutes of listening to them, giving them your time and attention, sympathizing with them, you suddenly feel drained, sleepy, and you just can't take this party anymore. You want to leave. So this means that this person essentially drain your energy and that person now feels better walks mm -hmm. away and mingles with other people and you're not feeling so good so if that happens to you that means you are the type of person who easily uh, gives energy away so that means you need to learn how to get it back um, some of the um, easy techniques to get the aura back uh, Meditations are good, but sometimes they don't help right away. It depends how you meditate and if you know how to meditate. Uh, sage is really great for restoring your aura. Mm -hmm. um, burning sage uh, around yourself, above your head, really works amazing. And I have sort of explored that and found that scientifically. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's One day, I I mean, all new age people know about sage, right? So new mm -hmm. age people frequently use sage to cleanse the space. And uh, they a lot of people feel some sort of cleanness, cleanness of the space after they use the sage. They feel it, but they can't explain it. Right, definitely. I've right. done that for sure. Yeah, like if I have a party or people over or somebody strange who makes their way to a house like a tele like a, a marketer or something you know not that you even let them in but yeah I, I definitely know what you mean and I know a lot of people yeah who can sense you know it's interesting what you say because I look at it sort of from the opposite point of view it's which is you're saying like people take your energy which is true I 100% agree with you I always feel like um, also psychic people people who are empaths etc um, or, you know, just sensitives, um, absorb other people's energy. It's like you take in the negative from that person who's being Absolutely. negative. That's and that, true. It yeah, goes it's both funny, ways. I never thought of it the other way. So it's just so funny because I always counsel my clients to, you know, make sure that they can protect their energy and do some of the things you've already mentioned, Absolutely. like, like stage. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, whoever, uh, people who like to take other people's energy, they can't just take from everybody. They yeah. only take for those who give. Right, right. What is it? With W.C. Fields, I don't know if you're familiar, from the 19, early 1900s, the movies, the, the um, early talkies. Uh, I never, um, uh, there's a sucker born every minute. <laughs> right, right. So, 
it's uh, it's just like a, a narcissist uh, will find a victim, uh, pick out a victim out of hundred people at the party. One person who will fall into a narcissistic trap, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, people who are not susceptible to that, they will not fall into that trap. So what I find that astrological chart presents signatures of a person being susceptible to um, energy drainage, energy vampirism. So uh, a person who has sort of, uh, I call it loopholes in the auric field, Mm -hmm. uh, where uh, either other people without their own um, auric field, without their own energy can latch on to, to drain, or sometimes even uh, a non-human entities can latch on to drain too. So I teach people how to uh, cleanse yourself, how to basically measure your own aura, like like you measure in your temperature of the body to diagnose uh, where you at. And once you are able to uh, control your own aura size and uh, bring it back to um, normal good size after it collapsed accidentally when you're not looking, Right then, you're noticing that your life is improving. My aura collapsed. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's. I love it. I love it. You, you're. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it's just you know it's dawning on me how fascinating this is because it's like wow, you could actually revive your own aura. I mean, I love to ask you a little bit more about that, and I love that you said because of course my you got to my question before I asked it, which is how does this correlate to somebody's natal chart or horoscope. So I love that. So you're saying you can see when there's potential loopholes, you called it, right? In right. the chart, and then identify with the client where there might be some energy uh, leakage or um, something that's affected the aura. Um, so you work with clients regularly on that basis? Is that something that you incorporate most of the time into your readings? Uh, yeah, so what I do is uh, when I do astrology readings, uh, I usually, typically, I can tell right away when I start a dialogue with the client, I can tell if in what state they're in right now, if their mm-hmm. aura needs to be boosted a little bit. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> because if their aura is not in a good state, it's not going to be a good uh, session. Right. right, and because right. I would feel drained myself, and that's right. what happened to me when I was in my twenties. I did a, a lot of counseling, astrology counseling. I had a lot of clients, and after a couple of years of doing that, uh, after some clients, I would feel headaches, and I would be drained for several days, and I couldn't do anything. So, at that time, I didn't know about aura, and I didn't know how to protect myself. So, uh, then I had to quit. For a few years, I had to stop counseling because I thought that it's just too draining. Mm-hmm. So now, if I feel that the client is um, not in a good place and had a, maybe a psychic attack in a fairly recent situation or has a, 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 a vampire that he lives with or uh, has in their life, which means their aura is distorted or not enough, they're not producing enough. So before I even start the session, I usually offer to do an aura tune-up and a boost. And once we uh, go through this process or to Mm -hmm. tune-up, then we start the session and the client asking completely different questions, becomes happy, content with their life and figure out their stuff much faster. So Mm -hmm. it, basically makes a, a reading more efficient and beneficial hmm. so, yeah and can can you share i mean i know you know this is a service that you sell but as you mentioned um meditation is there any, are there any other simple things that people you could share with people now that they can do to try to keep their aura healthier um, yes, so absolutely. Uh, I, I go into details uh, of that in my webinars, and I do have um, a, a nine-hour um, course uh, on my platform 
uh, astrology signs and new psychic abilities and part three of that specifically is about aura and all these different methods how to cleanse it how to um, work with your own aura yourself but simple things you can do to maintain your own auric field is like i said uh, sage if you don't have sage uh, buy it Mm -hmm. in the, uh, or buy a plant I grow my own plant so I sometimes rip the leaves and dry them and they dry very fast in like two days and then I burn one leaf to uh, cleanse my own aura oh that's cool and how, how often do you recommend doing that but it's it depends on a person like if you are one of these people who frequently susceptible who susceptible and frequently frequently get your aura drained mm -hmm. if you're in the type of business where you service customers who are maybe not well and they come to you for healing that right. means you need to generate a lot of energy in order to be able to give and if you're uh, um, are very much susceptible you might not have enough energy to give to everybody so you definitely need to have sage handy to constantly sage really if you if you're in a new age type of business like you're a healer or Reiki master or or um, astrology practitioner, I would say sage before and after each client. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Before yep. to give yourself powers to, to open up your aura to the full maximum potential and mm -hmm. after to remove any possible damage that got, was accidentally caused to your aura. And don't be afraid of people who damage your aura. These are not people who are evil go around and steal people's energy these are just weak people who don't generate their own that's why they um latch on to you to steal yours and frequently these are your own relatives um these are, these are, these are, could be your own um you know mother father who are not feeling well or recovering from addictions or you know these people are all screwed up and they don't generate their own good energy so they need yours and mm -hmm. your caretaker you have to give so for you to be able to give you have to have enough to give mm -hmm. and to have enough to give you have to constantly work on restoring your own aura right right and if you give everything you've got tomorrow you're not gonna have anything to give right right well, you know, I, I've mentioned before, though, not often on this show, I, I'm an um, MS patient, multiple sclerosis. I was diagnosed in March of 2019. It'll be 19 years ago. But one of the things that I learned um, during researching, you know, my own advocacy is how often uh, well, how much attention actually is paid to caretakers because there's a patient and whatever problem you have, whether it's something like an autoimmune disease or anything else, if you have a caretaker that's helping you, they get burnt out so quickly. And I think a lot of caretakers, particularly people like nurses or home aides, you know, are very easily drained because they have absolutely so much, you know, energy. And that's um, they yeah. are the ones who need sage in the most right exactly and all sorts of energy uh healing and meditation and also tons and tons of vitamins you guys please take uh triple doses of vitamins mm, okay huh like what for instance because they have to be water soluble right you can't just take too much of a vitamin that'll stay in the body for too long right well, uh, if we start talking about vitamins, I would recommend uh, niacin and vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Take it in a large doses. They are water soluble. Mm -hmm. They will keep your body and psyche stronger. They're also like niacin is a, a great, um, uh, great vitamin that works virtually as antidepressant and anti-anxiety vitamin. And you have to research on that mm -hmm. uh, and if you take it it basically helps your all your tension um, mental tension to relax you want to take it before you go to bed and recover faster your auric will recover faster if you are 
uh, relaxed. It's also great natural side effect free sleep aid. So that's uh, great. I was going to say uh, before I was going to ask you if sleep is important because obviously, I think yeah. I mean, I think the answer is obvious. Sleep is important, and a lot of people don't sleep well. So that's an interesting right. suggestion. And sometimes people don't sleep well because their aura was collapsed the evening before. When mm -hmm. the auric field is down, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not only that, uh, it's already down and it's very hard to recover on its own. Sometimes the non-human entities latch onto it as well and uh, they drain it even more. So in the morning you wake up, you wake up tired. If you have that symptom that you wake up tired and you feel like you had a bad sleep, that means your auric field is down and you probably have uh, uh, negative entities. It's basically energy clusters that uh, drain your aura at night. So mm, you wow. recover. Your body kind of recovers a little bit, but your aura, your spirit, uh, your emotional body is still down. And then it, you're dragging your feet the entire day trying to get to bed and then not getting rest, proper rest. So oh. you're... Aura, once it's uh, uh, fixed and brought back to health and strong and powerful, you're going to find yourself joyful every day, rested, uh, feeling powers. Sometimes I find that uh, a person, um, I, I get on the phone uh, with the person and the person sounds virtually like in a bad mood, depressed type thing. And... Uh, not feeling like doing something that that person needs to do. So if I do a remote aura checkup and healing and a boost, and suddenly the person, hey, like a whole new day just started, and the person gets going with whatever they wanted to do with whole newfound energy. Wow, cool. Now, Nadia, we have only a couple minutes left, and I want to give you the opportunity to tell people how they can contact you. And uh, it sounds like you do these aura readings. I'm not sure if they're only in conjunction with astrology reading or if you do it uh, solo. But Absolutely. tell us where people can reach out to you. And you mentioned your nine-hour course. How can people access this? I also mentioned your book. I know it's on Amazon. So, uh, you know, I got about, you got about two minutes. Tell us. <laughs> Sounds good. So in two minutes, I can ask people if you listening to this show right now and you're interested in more information and to get your auric field checked, email to me at nada, N-A-D-I-A, at physicsofastrology.com. And I'll give you uh, options. If you want to become a student, you can do this. If you just want to become um, a client and get your aura checked or astrology reading, you can do this. I do it remotely. Then I give usually a suggestion what to do, what to watch out for, like uh, what to do, do it yourself sort of exercises for your aura at home. They personalized depending on what is happening with the aura. Wow, that's fascinating. Do it yourself aura exercises. I love it. So, um, yes, Nadia, N A D I A, at physicsofastrology.com. You can also find me on Facebook and contact me through Facebook. Nadia Smirnova Miro. I have a page and I have a, I have a personal account and a business page, sort of. You can contact me through any of them. Right, and if you need the spelling of Nadia's name, you can look um, on my Karmic Evolution page on Facebook. You can look at the Contact Talk Radio Network Facebook page. She's posted there, and uh, that will give you the proper spelling. Now, also, um, quickly, you, you have a nine-hour course, you said. How can people find out more about that? Is that also at Nadia at this, uh, physicsofastrology.com? Uh, they're on uh, another website. It's called astrologyiscience.com, astrologyiscience.com. You can uh, buy, buy the entire course or you can buy each segment separately, part one, part two, part three, and become a student. You can then email me questions after each part. You can, you, uh, you can go and do exercises 
There are a couple of other techniques that I'm teaching there besides the how to work with your own aura that are very interesting and very, very inspiring for people. I get great feedback from my students when they use these techniques. That's great. Well, we are unfortunately out of time. I want to have you back. I want to talk about these spirit entities because I know something about that from my past life regression work and training. So I'd love to have you back to talk a little bit about that because I find that really fascinating, um, you know, and, and would like to introduce to people that's not as scary perhaps as it sounds, you know. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah, but thank you, Nadia. I appreciate you making time and I look Pleasure. forward to having you back. And I want to thank everyone else for joining me. I hope you've all found the information presented here helpful as you continue your karmic evolution in this lifetime. Namaste. Long ago, before this day's confusion did begin Throughout the stars did we go wandering Distance was no barrier, and time it had no hope. Free to come, and free to go. Free to come, and free to go. Open up the book.